Breaking news. Daryl Guberman exposes Robert Kelly Oberg's working background. He played the dual role of CEO at Rockwell Collins, a uh, supplier of uh, electronics uh, to in situ, I-N-S-I-T-U, which is a UAV a manufacturer. At the same time he was supplying material as a Rockwell Collins CEO, he sat on his customer, which is a subsidiary of Boeing in situ, okay, as the CEO. So he was playing a dual role CEO, Rockwell, Rockwell Collins and in situ. Rockwell Collins, now part of Collins Aerospace, supplied various systems to Insitu, a leading developer of unmanned aerial vehicles. Avionics systems. Rockwell Collins Avionics contributed to Insitu's UAV's overall performance, reliability, and safety. In 2014, Rockwell Collins announced it would provide avionics and communication systems for in situ Scan Eagle, the integrator unmanned aerial vehicles. Now, looking at it this way, the impropriety is very large here. People are going to say, no, it's not. Yes, it is. He was the CEO of Rockwell, and he's now the CEO of in situ at the same time. Rockwell supplies much of Boeing's avionic systems to their different aircraft varieties, 737, 767, 757, 777, 787, all of that, okay? How much of an impropriety is this, okay? How much? And we're going to continue on. Robert Kelly Oatberg was a CEO of Rockwell Collins between 2013 and 18, and he was a CEO at the same time between 2018 and 21, a Boeing subsidiary. He was not just Rockwell, he was an employee of Boeing. Do you understand the complexities of this? Before becoming in situ CEO, Oatberg held various leadership roles at Rockwell. At in situ, Oatberg focused on expanding unmanned aerial vehicle capabilities and strengthening partnerships. Here's where we get a little bit sticky. It's highly unlikely and potentially problematic for a CEO to lead both a supplier and a customer company. There would be conflicts of interest, ethics and corporate governance concerns, one, confl conflicts of interest. CEO's loyalty would be divided, potentially favoring one company over another. Two, insider information. CEO would have access to sensitive information from both companies, potentially compromising confidentiality. And by the way, China had infiltrated from what we gather in 2014, had, uh, had hacked some of Boeing and other military contractors taking some of the UAV uh, materials from their database. You don't make this up. And remember this, ladies and gentlemen, and business owners, I am 751. In 2015, the International Accreditation Forum, which was founded by ANSI, the American National Standards Institute, and ANAB, the American National Crediting Board, um, had both, both um, it's, a, it's an association of both uh, accreditation bodies, national and international, along with their sister organization, ILAC, the International Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation. This organization, incorporated in Delaware, the IAF, was handed over to a communist Chinese national where Rockwell Collins sat. Okay, you cannot make this up that Kelly Oatberg was the CEO of. 2015 to 21, this communist Chinese national was also the chief executive of the China National Accreditation Services that certified the laboratory in Wuhan, China. You know, the one that the virus. And I have confirmation by Anzi Ana, Vice President Pamela Sale, that she admitted to the release of that contagion. She did. I have all the data. So, it was handed over. And by the way, Zhao Jinwu is dictated this policy and mandated 
that through the China National Intelligence Law Article Number 7, to take our data, and they have both federal agencies and corporations on ANSI ANAB's board, like Boeing, Lockheed, you also have corporations like Pfizer and Johnson Johnson. Huawei is also sitting there, which is a big hacking organization where there's a lot written about that. So let's go back and look at this conflict of interest with Robert Kelly Oberg. Self-dealing CEO might prioritize transactions beneficial to one company and harming another. How do we know that they didn't use in situ, that Robert Kelly Oberg didn't use in situ to underplay all the avionics systems or use it as a, as a, uh, as a way, uh, a conduit, to get Boeing cheaper avionics for their airplanes through that since he was the CEO of both Rockwell, the supplier of avionics, and the customer in situ, which was the developer and designer of UAV technologies, unmanned air vehicles. Okay, He was the CEO of the company that supplied avionics uh, to the customer in situ. How do we know that he didn't use that as a way to funnel avionics systems, as I said, to aircraft? He is an employee, and the news media made it sound like he just worked at Rockwell College. Where do we find this? We have good people. In fact, they buried this. We have a lot of good people in a lot of good places, and they buried it. So Robert Kelly Oprah, here it is, antitrust concerns. Simultaneous leadership could raise antitrust concerns, especially if companies operate in the same market, which they do. UAV, avionics, it's all the same. Governance, board of directors and shareholders might question CEO's ability to make impartial decisions. Nobody said anything. Everybody kept quiet. Just like they did when I sent in my 42-page document to the board of directors at Boeing with 11 letters of recommendation. Now I know why they didn't answer. Because they're doing some shady dealing that I don't even know what the heck is going on. Yeah, we do know. But we don't want to publicize it as yet. We're saving that. While not impossible, such dual roles are rare and usually occur in family-owned businesses, small, closely held companies, or temporary transition periods. In general, corporate governance best practices recommend avoiding dual CEO roles to maintain independence, objectivity, and fairness. And that is a problem. Rockwell Collins is a leading aerospace and defense supplier providing avionic systems, communication systems, and other solutions to various customers, including Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and in situ, I-N-S-I-T-U, a Boeing sincere, uh, a subsidiary. Simultaneous CEO roles would create conflict of interest, insider information, self-dealing potential, antitrust concerns, governance, and regulatory issue. Hey, Mr. Blumenthal, you want something? Go after this mess. Because once you split open this pinata, it's not going to smell good. Robert Kelly Oprick's base salary is about $22 million with a $1.5 million um, uh, salary. So everything else is, I guess, bonuses, options, all the rest of that. I do this because... I'm that dark horse that I sent my documents in after I saw um, <clears throat> David Calhoun give his disposition on Capitol Hill on June 18th, 2024. He's an accountant. We have aerospace backgrounds. We have hands-on, hands-on for composites, plastics, non ferrous metals, aluminum, titanium alloys, like graphite. I saw the fuselage of the 787, okay, graphite. And it's made in four different countries, most of it. And that is the problem with the design issue. They have to bring those back and make it all in the United States. You send it out to all kinds of different countries. The variances that are doubled and tripled upon the fitting and uh, upon the structural strength of those products that are being made are compromised without a doubt. And we have composite background to prove it, hands-on. We're not sitting behind our desk like an engineer proving the system. We have hands-on. So this today, I hope you enjoy it because how could a, a CEO play customer CEO and also <laughs> supplier CEO and customer CEO? That's what Kelly Oakberg did, 203-556-1493.